Welcome to Insight, today produced in collaboration with KCOS 13, El Paso Public Television. Today we are chatting with Roman Ortiz, Chief Executive Officer of Project Arriba. Roman has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Roman, for joining us today. Well, thank you, Mark, for having us here. So talk about Project Arriba and workforce development. Well, sure. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for the service that you're offering, Project Arriba and other nonprofits on behalf of El Paso. We welcome you here. Uh, Project Arriba really was formed um, out of the necessity uh, here in this region to look at workforce development a little differently. Um, historically, across the nation, workforce development was viewed more as taking somebody who had a skill level, but because that job left countries, uh, and then being able to just get them into any type of job, but not really a good trade or a good skill. And what Arriba uh, wanted to focus on in this region was to, in the late 90s, look at what kind of jobs are in demand in this region. And will those jobs pay a family-sustaining living wage with benefits in a career path? And really, when you look at that language about 18 years ago, that was really forward-thinking uh, language because no one was talking about living wages. They weren't talking about family-sustaining wages. They weren't talking about jobs with benefits and a career path, things that we now look at as kind of commonplace and more normal uh, discussion on workforce development. So you basically took an approach that started off with one central question. How will the economy of El Paso develop over the next 20 years, 30 years? And then you shaped programs, the, your workforce development programs were, were specifically shaped in reference to that economic development. And then you add in the ingredients of family sustaining wages. Yes. Yes. And that's the key ingredient is to look at the employer uh, sector here in El Paso and see over the next 10, 20 years, what are the types of jobs that are going to be in high demand? In the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, in El Paso, it really turned to being a haven for um, uh, medical uh, and R&D in the medicine and as well as increasing the skill level of folks to become nurses, other allied health uh, degrees and as well as doctors. So in El Paso, the healthcare industry has grown tremendously over the last 20 years. And Project Arriba wanted to be a part of that workforce development. And so in a nutshell, what we do is that we go out and we help grow our own so that we can make sure that we can meet the needs of local employers here in this region that need qualified healthcare professionals so that they can be able to do the work that they need to do in this region. Our uh, board of directors is made up of uh, half organizing group and half business community. And I do want to talk a little bit about that. Our organizing group partners, uh, their name is the El Paso Interreligious Sponsoring Organization and Border Interfaith. And what their key role is in the impetus of our program is uh, being able to go out into the community and talk to folks about what were the barriers that were stopping them from being able to go to college in the first place. Was it even transportation? Was it uh, a lack of resources? Was it even a lack of uh, child care availability? And being able to understand that at that molecular level, we then as an organization can help offset uh, those types of what we call life barriers through what we consider uh, a 360 wraparound support service. So you have basically two things going on. First of all, you have a partnership between community on the one hand and business on the other. The second thing that you have going on is you are collecting intelligence but also establishing credibility, both with the business community and with local communities in need. So that credibility and that intelligence informs the programs that you put together. And then you start to shape your programs from that base. It's a very strong, very powerful base from which to move. Yes. When you look at uh, business and you look at, say, community organizing, oftentimes those two groups may not meet because they have two different parallel universes. They might also be in conflict with one another. They might be in conflict. 
what Project Arriba is able to do is able, is able to take an individual who has expressed these particular deficiencies and then being able to go to college. And now when we are able to offset those deficiencies through the 360 wraparound support, when they finish within a very good period of time, on average it takes about two and a half years for our participants to finish their degree and get job placed here in this region. Now, on average, last year, Mark, our graduates were making $48,000 a year. $48,000 a year in El Paso. In El Paso. That's a, tr that's a tremendous, tremendous shift. They came into our program making $7,500 a year. So they increased their earning potential by six and a half times. And meanwhile, the, the, the businesses... There we go. The businesses are benefiting yes because they're not going to be paying that type of money for nothing exactly and now the uh the banks are able to provide loans uh, folks are able to buy houses uh, car dealerships are able to sell more cars you see the economic impact when you invest in human capital we feel based on the data that we have now had over the course of 20 years almost that it reaps the highest re return on investment than almost anything uh, that, that is out there. And the children of those families, those families having the advantage of that type of income, the children of those families now, they basically are operating from a different, a different foundation than their parents operated from. Absolutely. What does it cost to, to have a young person go through this? this uh, this program. On average, our unit cost is $5,500 per person, and it takes two and a half years for that person to finish. $5,500 per year? Per year. So it's about $12,000 yes. for, the, for the average uh, average student, and the, the ROI ratio is 1 to 24. Yes, and they've increased their earning power by six and a half times within two and a half years, and uh, there's four major pillars that we want to make sure that people can evaluate us on. One is access to college. We want to make sure that we can take those that are underprivileged and get them into college. We have, a, we have great um, access rates, but more importantly, persistence rates. In the state of Texas, uh, for every 100 students that start college, on average, about 43 are still there in 12 months. In El Paso, that number is probably much lower. Uh, but at Project Arriba, for every 100 students that start our program, we have over 65 individuals, I'm, I'm sorry, we have over 80 individuals still in the program uh, 12 months later. So for every 100, over 80 are still in the program yes. 12 months later. When they look at graduation rates across the state of Texas, they look at six, they look at six year graduation rates. Mm -hmm. um, the best universities in Texas would be Texas A&M and UT Austin. And they have graduation rates at about 43% over six years. So for every 100 that start in six years, you're going to have maybe less than half right. uh, graduate. 43 will come out. In El Paso, again, because of the nature of the type of student that we have, that graduation rate is much lower. Uh, but Project Arriba has not a six-year graduation rate, but a 65% three-year graduation rate. So basically, you're saving 50% of the time. Mm -hmm. and your graduation rate is 50% higher. Yes, and the main reason for that success is the individualized case management approach. Every week, our participants meet with their case managers and uh, as a community group where we call them vision, initiative, and perseverance meetings. And it's at these VIP meetings that we develop the student for the workplace. So we will have formalized uh, workshops where we help the individual with dressing for success, resume writing, how to present uh, well, uh, what does a, a particular employer look for in a type of employee. Um, we will have over 30 workshops per year that develop this individual to be the best employee possible. That same student is also usually one of the very top students at the colleges. Um, and to give you a, you know, a quick example, we have had uh, you know, uh, many people on the dean's list and on the president's list. We've had the top student uh, graduate from the nursing class in UTEP. We've had the top students graduate uh, in EPCC. Uh, and so we're very proud that they know that this is a chance and a once-in-a-lifetime once in opportunity.
to be able to take this help and not us do something for them that they can do for themselves, but really more importantly, giving them this opportunity to succeed. Uh, when you, when We feel that when you give folks an opportunity to succeed, they will succeed. And we want to show the nation that in El Paso, even though we have these great things going on for us, there are some hurdles that we need to come, up, we need to come over. And with this model, we have been successful at it. In terms of your expansion over the next years, what are, you, what are the major impediments that you have that, that keep your expansion uh, back? Is it mostly funding? It's mostly funding. You know, in 2008, the nation experienced um, another recession, uh, one of the worst ones in, in recent history. Uh, and for the nonprofit world, um, those recessions uh, trickle down. So it, it may not, they may not hit us in 2009, but it will continue to hit in 2010, 11, and 13, because as companies, foundations, corporations offset those particular losses, the, the, some of the first things they have to cut is their internal giving. Right. Um, the state governments as well, as people lose their jobs and not create a tax base high enough to fund those budgets, the first things that state and local governments have to do is cut those particular things that are helpful to the region at large. And so uh, Arriba experienced uh, some major funding uh, const uh, constraints uh, over the course of 2010 to about 2016. Um, and we start to see now that the, that the pendulum is, is now swinging the other way, and we hope that that will be the continued case because we do feel that the, our board of directors is very adamant in saying that Although we're a nonprofit, we run this nonprofit like a business, and we want to make sure that every dollar can be accounted for completely. It is a be business. Returned. I mean, the fact that it happens to be connected to a particular part of the tax code really makes no difference at all. It has to be run in a crisp manner. Yes, and so we're you know we're very uh, grateful that every year we have had clean audits. We do independent audits every year. As an organization, we also get audited through all of our different funders and foundations and, and uh, Project Ariba right now under the, the Guide Star, which is kind of the report card for nonprofits. We're at a gold status and we anticipate to be platinum status in 2018. Roman Ortiz, thank you so much for describing the great work of Project Ariba and thank you so much for well, your insights. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for having me.